story rooted in Africa and rumor is that literally a few pages into the screenplay you broke down and decided this is I, I want to be a part of this. Is this true? This is very true. It was less than 10 pages in and I was just so moved by what I found in the page. This is a, a story that was told with a lot of complexity, layers, the characters felt real to me in less than 10 pages and Mira Nair, their director, was asking me to play a mother of four children. Uh, nobody had asked me to do that <laughs> until this point. And I was just so intrigued. This film in many ways is like an anthem for dreaming out loud. And uh, that is something that obviously resonates with me. You can say anything you want to say. Cheers helps us solve problems. Hey, but I'm gonna love you anyway. What would you say is the message at the center of the film? Would you say it's a message of hope? I would like to believe so. I mean, this is, I think, what this film is, it's about so much, but it's really about harnessing genius. It takes an individual to possess genius and it takes a community to harness it, to nurture it, to bring it out. And that's what we see in Robert Katende's work and in Harriet accepting her daughter's um, unimaginable dreams. She's winning, she's winning. And play a game. You also recently referred to Queen of Cartwright as sort of the new image of Africa on screen. I didn't grow up seeing these kinds of stories told by studios as large as Disney. I didn't grow up with very many images of myself on TV or in film. And when I have experienced stories that are told on the African continent, it's usually with the foreigners front and center of those narratives. And the Africans are often the, the backdrop of the story. But here we have the Africans front and center of their own narrative. And we have a girl, a young girl, at, at the center of this narrative, and she has so much agency. And each character has agency, despite uh, being a victim of poverty or whatnot, you know? That it is really a story about hum the human spirit and its resilience, and actually about hope. It is a very intimate story. There is no you know, world leader in this. This is just simple people in Katwe doing extraordinary things. Hey Fiona, how is your life? It is fine. I want to talk a bit, bit about the location. Um, obviously the slums of Uganda. Did that have, or what impact did it have on on your craft as an actor? I mean... Yeah, it was it was fantastic to shoot there because you are, you have your research all around you and you actually have to contend with the elements as they come there. You know, Katwe is a place where not many film crews show up and, and do such things on such a large scale, so we attracted a lot of attention. But then there is life happening and everything is col colliding. You know, you have to dodge the border border, you have to um, navigate the rickety bridge, there's open sewers and all that. So it was always stimulating and always very informative for my character development and the story as well. Something that shines through is the authenticity. Was it difficult, like, going back to the roots as an African and also the, the dialect? Was, did it come naturally to you? Well, you know, it's, like, this is the thing that's so amazing about Mira's story is that it's so specific. So just being African doesn't cut it. You know, it's about learning the Ugandan way. It's about learning the Katwe way. It's about really getting specific. And Mira was just unrelenting about that. Peter, thank you so much for taking the time to chat to us. And thank you for the magic that you do on screen. Oh, thank you. Stronger than your bruises, I got thick skin.